to the One Stop Summer School uh, Resources webinar. Um, welcome wherever you are. Um, so first of all, um, I want to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about me. Um, I'm the development editor here at One Stop English, and I'm also the development editor for Macmillan Teacher Professional Development, uh, all of which means that I help to edit resources for One Stop English, and therefore am supposedly best placed to uh, talk to you through the One Stop resources. So I'm going to start sharing my video with you now. Thank you, Henry. Okay, um, so I also used to be a teacher. Uh, I taught for 10 years uh, in Asia, in Europe and in London. And so hopefully I've got a good few tips I can share with you. Um, but also you guys are teachers, so we're going to try and make this interactive and hopefully you can share some ideas as well. Um, and to run you through how the webinar is going to work, uh, we're going to look at some resources for different types of learners. Um, we've got teens and young learners, and then we're going to look at adults. Uh, some more specific classes, so business and uh, exam classes, EAP as well. And finally, we're going to look at some teacher development materials. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what each resource is and hopefully why it's good for your summer schools. And then we're going to discuss some tips and ideas for using these resources in your summer classes. And it's going to be a discussion because obviously I have my ideas, but you guys are all teachers as well, and you have your ideas. So we're going to do a couple of exercises where you can give some ideas and hopefully share with each other. Um, so to begin with, I want to do uh, a couple of polls, ask you a couple of questions. So Henry's going to pop these up on the screen. Uh, first of all, I would like to know, uh, who do you teach? So if you could choose one of the options, who do you teach mainly? Uh, obviously, some of you might teach more than one type of learner. Is it adults, teenagers, or children? Okay, so the majority there is teenagers, which is a good thing, actually. Is this going to help me uh, decide on which resources to focus on more? And uh, fortunately, we do have more teenage resources. Um, so nearly 50%. And the second question... Can you tell me what type of English you teach? So our options are general English, business English, exams, or EAP. Okay, yep, yeah. so a large majority, vast majority there, 80%, just over 80% is general English, which is excellent. And finally, uh, in the chat box, I think I've seen some nationalities, but can you just pop in the chat box? Where are you from? Where's everyone from today? So which country are you tuning in from? Okay, we've got a fair mix there. Russia, Poland, Italy. Good stuff. Okay, so that's interesting to see all over the world. Excellent. Right, so... To begin with, uh, with One Stop English, um, most important thing here is navigation. So you can find out what you're looking for. You can find what you're looking for easily. And if we look at, this is the home page here, uh, we have across the top of the home page, you can see some tabs. So starting on the left with business, all the way across to the right, we have community. And these tabs, if you hover over the tabs, they contain a drop-down menu. And in the drop-down menu, you can find different resources um, for each type of English. And then up top here, we have a search box, search function. Uh, <clears throat> this you can use if you're looking for a more specific resource. So you can type in, for example, present perfect, or you could type in uh, shopping for a topic. And it will give you a list of all the resources on one stop which uh, will help you with that type of lesson. So, moving on, we're going to begin with by looking at teenagers and children's and young learners' resources. Uh, on, the, uh, on the tabs at the top, you can find them just here, under logically teenagers and uh, children, or children and teenagers. Uh, I'm going to look through uh, four different resources today. Uh, I can't choose all the resources because there are thousands of resources, so I needed to be selective, and I think these ones will probably work best for your summer classes. First series is called Impressions, uh, and then we're going to look at a time to travel, uh, spot on news lessons, and finally some young learners top trumps. So, a little more information about Impressions to begin with. 
Now, each series has its own kind of artwork. And if you look at the top, you've got a nice, we call these the banner. And the banner will appear at the top of the resources on the website, so you can identify easily. Uh, Impressions is a series of standalone lessons, which means it's not a series where you have to teach lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five. You can choose any lesson and you can teach it and it could be used to complement an existing course that you're teaching. Um, all of the themes in Impressions are hopefully popular for teens. So we've got lessons on clothing, lessons on friendship, lessons on meeting people. Um, each lesson contains teacher's notes and uh, it contains lesson tips, lesson ideas uh, for how to teach the materials. There's lots of language input, vocabulary, and we include speaking, uh, lots of pair work, and hopefully lots of communicative activities. So let's take a look in more detail. These are the teacher's notes. Now it's probably quite small uh, on your screen, so you can't see in too much detail, but don't worry, I'll talk you through it. In the top left corner, we've got an info box, which gives you the information about the lesson, the level of the lesson, the time needed for the lesson, the aims of the lesson. And then we have teacher's notes. And in the blue boxes, we have language tips on how to elaborate on the material in the lesson plan. Uh, the worksheet looks a little something like this. Um, again, it's quite small. So um, I'm going to show you in a bit more detail. Uh, here is a sample of the lesson. And now I want to do your first activity. Um, just take a look at this lesson plan for 10 or 15 seconds. And in the chat box, can you write down any ideas on how you could elaborate on this material? What you could do in class with this type of lesson, as well as the ideas on the worksheet. So any ideas you have in the chat box, how could you use this material? Okay, so we've got good compare and contrast. Excellent. Thank you, David. David's from Mexico, I believe. Writing a story. Yeah, okay, good. Conversation class. Talking about animals and pets. Excellent. Personality adjective. Yep, these are great. All the types of ideas I had. Uh, another question on this. If you were teaching idioms in this class, does anyone have any idea what type of idioms you might introduce? I say weather, specifically using the uh, using the animals on the page. Raining cats and dogs, excellent. Or fight like cat and dog. Uh, some of the ideas that I had for this, obviously animal vocabulary you could use. Um, character adjectives as well. Uh, you could have a discussion or a debate, which do you prefer, which do you like best. And uh, as you said, describing pets. So impressions is the first uh, teen resource I wanted to show you. And moving on, another resource we've got is called A Time to Travel. This is for teens. It is a series of audio adventures. Uh, so we have some characters and they go on adventures around the world and students listen. This is a listening lesson and they follow the characters on their adventures. Uh, as with One Stop, it's a, sorry, as with uh, Impressions, it's a standalone lesson. So you don't have to follow the series, but you can if you wish. Uh, again, there are teacher's notes, worksheets, and there's a listening transcript as well with each lesson, which is very useful. So your students can read while they follow the listening. Uh, these are integrated skills, so they also include reading and vocabulary and speaking as well. Uh, as I said, standalone or series. So to show you in more detail, here are the uh, teacher's notes, a uh, different type of info box there. Um, but the same kind of information and detailed teacher's notes step by step explaining how to go through the materials and this is an example of one of the worksheets. As you can see, there is uh, a reading on the worksheet and here is that reading. So for your next activity, can you take a look at the reading and can you in the chat box write down any ideas that you think you could use uh, to elaborate on this piece of reading in this lesson plan. Excellent idea from Olga there, running dictation. 
Uh, read and retail. Yep, yeah, I like that. True or false? Show films about Amazonia. Yep. Yeah. A jigsaw reading. Create an article, global warming. Brilliant. Some fantastic ideas coming through here. Uh, some of our other ideas that I had, um, if we look closely, there's, uh, in the second sentence, it's the biggest ecosystem in Brazil. So biggest, we could use superlatives or we could teach comparatives. Uh, you could describe a natural beauty spot in your country. Um, numbers and percentages. There's lots of numbers and percentages in there. So we've got 20%, we've got 27 degrees centigrade, 2.7 meters of rain. So if you're teaching uh, something more academic like IELTS, you could do numbers and percentages. Uh, and also a transcript gap fill. So you could take the transcript, you could blank out some of the words and then get your students to listen and fill in the gaps in the transcript. Um, so this is a time to travel. Let's move on to our next resource, uh, spot on news lessons. These are news lessons which are written, uh, especially for teens. They're taken from a magazine called Spot On, uh, logically enough. Uh, they're available across three levels, uh, so elementary, intermediate, and advanced. And uh, each lesson includes a sort of warmer, a discussion topic, which introduces the key vocabulary for the lesson. Uh, it's followed by reading with comprehension questions. Uh, also included, there are web quests for homework. Um, if you haven't done a web quest before, this is a uh, lesson where students have to go on the internet and read articles to find answers to their questions. So it's a quest on the web. Um, in more detail, these are uh, the. This is one example of the article. Now, Spot On doesn't contain teachers' notes. Uh, it's all fairly self-explanatory. So if you read the instructions or you read the rubric for each exercise, it tells you exactly what to do. There are no teachers' notes, but it does have an article and it does have an attached key as well. So all the answers are there, even though there are no teacher's notes. Uh, an example of this is uh, there's a lesson on Brighton, um, one of the nicest cities in the UK. And we're going to do our third exercise. If you could look at the warmer here, the warmer at the top of the page, and we have some alliteration uh, as a warmer. So it says, beautiful, brilliant Brighton. Um, just for a bit of fun, in the chat box, I'd like you to write an example for your city, where you're from, not your country, but your city, uh, using alliteration. So two adjectives beginning with the same letter as your home city. So my example in the rubric is lively, lovely London. Let's see if you can write uh, an example for your city in the chat box. David again, marvelous, mesmerizing Mexico. Mexico City or Mexico, good. Super Sally Seuss. Magic, magnificent Moscow, I like it. Awesome, <laughs> awesome Apple City, Almaty. Good stuff. Brilliant, okay, so for example, with this, this lesson, you could ask your students to do the same exercise for their city. Um, Possibly better with a, a multilingual class if you're teaching uh, in the UK or the US. Um, but also if you've got students from the same city, you can get them to compare their uh, their answers. And then uh, another part of the warmer, we've got a gap fill with some of the key vocabulary that you could that you'll come across in the text. Crazy criminal Carlisle, brilliant. Uh, I think that should be the slogan for the tourist board there. Okay, so moving on, there's. Um, Another series for younger learners, this is for children, um, young learners top trumps. So uh, we're not going to go through this in too much detail. If you've played top trumps before, it's a card game. And the idea is to collect all the cards. So the winner is the person with all the cards at the end of the game. And this is with baby animals, perfect for young learners. So they're introduced to uh, the baby animals such as piglet or cub and they've got information about all the animals and they try and collect all the cards and all these resources including the teens and the children are on the uh, on the tabs that i showed you before now i'm just going to run through a couple more resources we're not going to look at them in detail but uh, just to give you an idea we've got web quests uh, they're in homework for the spot on lessons but we've also got other web quests available under the teens tab 
Um, we've got them available on festivals and on different cities. So these are worksheets where students go and research lots of questions on the internet. Um, answers uh, provided as well and teacher's notes. Um, so we've got separate teacher's PDF and uh, worksheet. Uh, two lessons which uh, are quite similar but uh, differ in the type of English, beyond and go beyond. Uh, these are lessons which are on two topics. One's on the arts and media and the other topic is on knowledge. Arts and media deals with television or cinema or the theatre and knowledge deals with science or history or geography. Uh, beyond is British English and go beyond is american english so if you're teaching american english you'd use go beyond british english you'd use beyond and then finally for our younger learners we've got one stop phonics available in the children's tab and this is introducing uh, children to phonetics to phonics in english and we've got lots of fun characters named after fruits so uh, i think we've got this alice apple perhaps uh, Colin Carrot. Um, but yeah, great for young learners, great for children, introducing them to uh, phonics. So let's look at some adult classes. Um, these are skills classes. They are available under the skills tab. Um, so the, all the series we're going to look at now, you can find if you look under the skills tab. I'm going to look at three today. Life from London, Compass and Everyday Life. Uh, let's begin with Life from London. So Life from London is actually a series of video lessons and audio lessons. So we've got uh, audio podcasts and we've got video lessons which were filmed on location in Brixton uh, in my, my neighbourhood, my home neighbourhood in London. If you've been to Brixton, you'll know it's uh, lovely and incredibly safe. And all of them are unscripted interviews with members of the public. So we didn't uh, write these for, uh, for language classrooms. We went out on the streets, we interviewed people, and we, we filmed their answers uh, unscripted, and then we turned these into lessons. Um, each lesson includes a set of ideas uh, for using the interviews in class uh, and a transcript plus an editable worksheet. So what this means is that if you don't like the exercises on the worksheets, you can go into them, they're in Word format, and you can edit them yourselves for your class. Uh, these are fantastic for higher level learners, and they listen to authentic conversations. So this is how real English is spoken in uh, a part of London by, uh, by people who are not uh, given scripted answers. So here's an example of the uh, transcript, and then an example of the worksheet. Again, both of these are editable. What I want to do now is show you the video. So we're going to watch 90 seconds of the video and then you could, in the chat box, write down ideas you might have for how to use the, trans how to use the videos in your lesson. Hello. And welcome to Live from London, brought to you by One Stop English. Today we're in Brixton and we're asking people about first impressions. What do you first notice about someone when you meet them? When they walk in the room. Yeah. Um... I don't know, probably their sort of like attitude. It's the first thing that I notice. Yeah. I judge people really quickly. Gee. It's really bad, yeah. And I make my mind up there and then, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, I get it from my mother, so. Oh, really? Yeah, I just make a decision. I don't really know what it is. I just get a general feeling about someone. Maybe, you, maybe they're aura. Are I'm you saying. normally right, or. or? Well, well, I've made the judgment, so I'm never there to find out if I don't like them. It doesn't really matter anyway. It's a done deal. But sometimes you see people and they're scruffy and they're the nicest people, or you can have the really okay. smart... Okay, so uh, that was, uh, well, that was Luke, uh, one of our authors, who uh, introduces the videos, and Harry, uh, interesting chap, who uh, answered our questions. So, uh, having watched the video, how would you adapt that to use it in your class? 
hopefully it worked for everyone. Uh, does anyone have any ideas how you could use the video with a class? Yeah, so Mehmet says a listening comprehension. Uh, Patricia, talk about first impressions. Uh, interesting idea, okay. So Kara Chaver says, ask children to repeat it, okay. Interviewing classmates. Expressing opinions. And a role play as well. Excellent, so lots of good ideas there. Some other ideas that I had. Um, if you're uh, living in an English-speaking country, you could ask your students to go out on the street and interview people themselves using the same questions. Uh, you could give your students the worksheets, ask them to adapt the worksheets for each other. So watch the videos and write their own worksheets. And uh, then, of course, they could interview each other in class and record their answers and then play the answers back so they could watch each other in class. Uh, there are seven lessons in the video series to begin with, and we will be doing some more videos later in the year or early next year. So um, let's move on. Next resource I want to look at is Compass. Now Compass is uh, up an intermediate, it's a project-based course. So while learning language students are also doing a project, uh, all the lessons are based around culture and intercultural understanding. Um, so these are excellent for mixed nationality classes, people from different cultures. Uh, integrated skills again, and they each lesson, they, they, some of the lessons use video, some audio, some reading, uh, a lot of discussion as well. Um, here's uh, an example of the teacher's notes. So in the top left corner, as, as usual, the info box. And then the teacher's notes, including helpful tips. We've got tips to use technology as well. So uh, tips for language, tips for technology. And we've all, here's an example of the worksheet. This is from one lesson uh, to do with eating habits, cultural eating habits. Uh, as before, here is the worksheet in more detail. And any ideas you have, just take a look at this for 10 or 15 seconds in the chat box. Can you put any of your lesson ideas? So we've got, could be an article for a newspaper project. Write an essay, yeah, okay. Animal similes. Thank you, Dervla. Animal similes. Can anyone think of animal similes you could use? Grouping animals, animal classifications, presentations as well. Conditionals, okay, yeah, if you <laughs> imagine if you were one of the animals, love it. Um, my ideas for this, you could uh, talk about or give presentations on cultural traditions to do with animals in your country. Uh, a research project about your favorite animal. Some of Alexandra just said projects about animals. Um, if you had younger learners as well, if you had time, you could combine this with a trip to the zoo. For example, you could, it's a summer school, so you might want to take your students outside class. You do the lesson first, you go to the zoo afterwards, and uh, equal students can see the animals that they've learned about. Now, moving on, the last adult resource is Everyday Life. Uh, this is another series of standalone lessons. These are useful for complementing existing courses that you're doing. These ones, more adult rather than impressions, they talk about everyday situations. So going shopping, um, what different types of food, uh, money, health, applying for jobs. Again, they contain teacher's notes, answer keys, and uh, lots of teaching tips. Uh, we'll take a look at those now. Here are the teacher's notes, and here is an example of the worksheets. Final exercise for today on the worksheet. Um, we've got a big picture of lots of different types of food. Final exercise for you guys in the chat box. What would you do with your class with this resource? Okay, Gulmera says going to a restaurant, doing the shopping, nutrition, menu, healthy, unhealthy foods, good. Interviews about eating habits. Comparatives, yep, okay. Discuss the food pyramid, good. So you can educate your students in English and also in healthy eating. Fantastic. So uh, let's move on and we're going to zip through some other skills resources. Remember, all these resources are available on the skills tab on the homepage. Uh, buzzwords, this is uh, from Macmillan Dictionary. 
And this is a series of lessons based around a topical word uh, that's in the news at the moment. So recent example is Brexit in the UK. We're voting whether to stay in or leave Europe. And we've got a lesson plan based around this buzzword. Our students read an article, they do gap fills. We've got a series of lessons on celebrations. These are special days throughout the year. And uh, in the summer, we've got uh, Independence Day and we've got various other uh, special days uh, which you could uh, teach your students about. Uh, global is uh, an infographic lesson. So an infographic is when lots of information is presented on a graphic and students learn about the information and then they go away and answer questions. Uh, these come from the Macmillan book Global, which contains reading lessons as well. Uh, Macmillan Life Skills, a bit more of a serious uh, series here. This is for education purposes and employment purposes. If you need to teach your students about uh, building a CV, applying for jobs, uh, this is a fantastic series. And then we've got Macmillan Dictionary Skills, which is where you can teach students study skills, excellent for study skills. Uh, these are over three different levels and your students will learn how to use a dictionary and uh, how to get the most out of, well, Macmillan Dictionary, hopefully. Um, now, we're going to take a look at specialist classes. Now, these are available on the left side of the tab. We've got business, we've got ESP and EAP. We've got ESOL, we've got exams, and we've got grammar. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on these because most of you are teaching general English and teens. Uh, for the business resources, we've got uh, worksheets such as these. This one is for making suggestions, or we've got other ones in, including negotiations, uh, but they're basic business skills for your business class, and you can get your students doing real life scenarios, uh, using gap fills, uh, reading transcripts. Uh, if you have a summer school and your students want a bit more fun, we have uh, an adult version of Top Trumps, Business Top Trumps. So uh, your students can imagine their various business people and try and outscore each other to win all the cards. Uh, if your students like games, that is. For ESP and EAP, ESP, we've got uh, lots of different uh, types of vocational uh, worksheets. This one's hospitality and tourism, uh, giving information in tourist centers, and it includes a role play. So it's great for getting your students, if they're gonna go on holiday, if they're gonna travel over the summer, you can prepare them by giving them a role play on how to book uh, their travel. Uh, EAP, we've got a new series related to Shakespeare, and your students are introduced to Shakespeare. This is the 400th anniversary. Uh, this year of Shakespeare, and all, all these are based upon Shakespeare plays. Uh, for a summer school, uh, if you have the opportunity, you could uh, combine this with a trip to the theatre. Um, <clears throat> in ESOL, uh, this is for absolute beginners. We've got a series of 10 lessons uh, on absolute beginners, so it's very, very basic English, very, very uh, sort of almost no English, introducing the alphabet, introducing introducing numbers, introducing very basic conversations, and we will soon be producing the new series of 10 lessons on absolute beginners uh, to complement this first series. Uh, we've got exams, for example, Matura. Uh, this is uh, similar to FCE, but uh, excellent for teens. And each lesson will set out a scenario. This one's on healthy living. Uh, so you could do a discussion, you could get your students to write an essay. Um, so different kinds of skills there. There's a reading attached as well, so uh, you can try and cover all the different skills in your exam classes. And a bit of an anomaly for the last one, fun with grammar. Uh, technically not traditionally a fun subject, but with grammar we've got various games. Each of the fun with grammar series is a, a game. So we've got a board game here which is based on adverbs, adverbs of frequency, uh, but there's all sorts of different grammar points. Uh, you can select them and they uh, try to make grammar a little more fun for your learners rather than just a gap fill and a worksheet. Uh, finally today, I want to look at something not for your students, but for you as teachers. And this is a teacher development resources on one stop. Uh, these are found, uh, Henry will share with you in a minute the, uh, the, the homepage and he'll show you where these are found. They're found on the, on the right hand side under the methodology tab. We've got first steps into, uh, this is to do with new uh, pedagogies for ELT, such as blended learning, uh, flipped learning, or digital literacy. And it's a series of articles uh, on these new pedagogies and how you can use them in your classroom. So lots of teaching tips 
uh, lots of information about the new pedagogy. Um, so if you want to bring your teaching up to speed, 21st Century Teaching, it's a fantastic series written by uh, Daniel Barber, who's a teacher trainer and a technology expert. Uh, very importantly as well, we've got Lesson Share. Now, if no one's entered this before, this is a one-stop competition which we run uh, on a monthly basis. And these lessons are written by teachers, for teachers. And we, uh, here at One Stop, we professionally edit and design the lessons. Uh, but all these lessons are produced by you, by the teachers. So some of you may have entered before, some of you may have won before. Um, if you haven't, why not give it a go? Um, two more uh, teacher development resources. We've got uh, Tech Tasks and Tech Tools for Teachers. So Tech Tasks for the class. Uh, tech Tasks is about the things you can do in your class, the type of activity you can do using technology. Um, again, these are a series of articles, not lesson plans. Uh, whereas Tech Tools is about the technology you use, not the activity, but the technology you use. Um, so maybe it'd be blogging, for example. And these ones are on the methodology tab on the homepage. And finally, um, things to remember for your summer schools. So on one stop, you need to use the tabs to navigate your way around the resources. Uh, but also bring your own ideas to the class. Uh, so as we've talked about, adapting resources is very important. Vary your approach across the summer, which will keep your classes as fresh as possible. Um, and if you have the opportunity, incorporate trips, and work outside the classroom, if possible, uh, to bring English to real life situations. And then, of course, have fun. Now, Henry uh, is going to share the one stop homepage with you and just show you about the 30 day free trial. If you're not a subscriber, if you're not registered to subscribe already, he'll show you about the free trial. And also one more tip about some more videos you can see with professional development. So thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful and I will pass you over to Henry. <clears throat> okay, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so as Patrick said, I'm going to now attempt to do some screen sharing. So there'll be a brief delay while I get that ready. Uh, so bear with me um, as quick as I can. So hopefully you are now all seeing my uh, screen, guys. Um, and you should be on the One Stop English homepage, which you can see there. Um, we've got an offer at the moment uh, for institutional subscriptions, as you can see. Um, yeah, by the way, please let me know if you have any questions that I can pass on to Patrick or I can deal with myself while I'm doing this. You can still write in the chat box. Um, so, yeah, we're on the home page right now. As you can see, we've got a Guardian news lesson, which is updated every week. And we also have a, a monthly version of that available, too. And then there is the pick of the week, which I'd recommend you uh, coming back and checking out each week. Uh, of course, that's updated on a weekly basis as well. So the um, videos that uh, Patrick was referring to are available from the community tab at the top here. You then need to scroll down to our people and come to where it says teacher talks. So click on there. And uh, from that page, you'll be able to access the uh, professional development presentations which were hosted by some of the members of our team this year at IATEFL in um, Birmingham. So if you weren't able to physically join us in Birmingham, then you can catch up on all the action on this page. So we've got actually a talk there that Patrick was involved in too. So if you'd like to see more of Patrick, get your fix by checking out his talk with Sarah. Uh, latest resources. Um, so, Patrick, if you want to just, uh, you can turn the mic back on maybe and say a few words about that as well. Yeah, yeah. so hi, I'm back here. So, uh, if Henry takes you back to the home page, um, and then just to clarify, below the pick of the week, you can scroll down slightly and you'll see uh, latest resources there. Now, some people uh, only know about the tabs at the top. 
But every month, it's the first Tuesday of the month, we uh, publish our latest resources. So there are between 15 and 20 resources every month on uh, all our topics from grammar to EAP. We have a new video each month, and um, this is where you can find them. They're updated, as I said, the first Tuesday of every month. Um, so uh, finally, if you do have any questions, um, now's the time to type them. We've got two whole minutes remaining. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and um, I hope you found it uh, useful. So we've got a question of how do we subscribe. Um, Henry, if you want to take them back to the home page. So Henry's just taking you back to the home page here. Uh, we actually have, at the moment, we have a free 30-day trial. So at the top of the page on the green bar, uh, just on the right of the sign in tab. Uh, yeah, there's a free 30 day trial which you can sign up for, and this will give you 30 days for free uh, to have a look around the site, try out some of the materials, decide um, which materials work best for your class. Um, subscriptions, uh, so someone said, are they annually based? Uh, all the subscription information is available when you go into the uh, free trial. Um, Henry. And any base? Uh, so say that again. Are the subscriptions annually based? Oh, oh yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, they are. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I, I, I got uh, busy clicking on things. <laughs> I, I don't deal with subscriptions myself, so uh, apologies yes. for that. Twelve months. Yes. Terrific. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, enjoy the rest of the webinars. And have a nice day. Okay, thanks Patrick, and sorry for the slight delays there. Um, always a bit tricky when you're trying to do the screen share. Um, I hope you're able to follow us uh, during that though. And don't forget, uh, check out those links I've been sharing in the chat box and um, come back and watch the recording, which will go live um, tomorrow. Uh, so just visit macmillanenglish.com and then navigate from there through to the webinar archive. So uh, I'm gonna let Patrick go now. Uh, if you'd like to just thank him all in the chat box for being with us today. Um, and then we're going to have a few uh, moments break while I prepare um, our next speaker, Amy, who is uh, waiting.